Good afternoon once again. Uh, welcome to episode 727. The topic today is about relationship desire. I'll call it that for, for sake of argument. And the topic is actually called, um, Does Your Need for a Relationship Outweigh Your Desire for One? And I'll break that down in, in more explanation and, and also a little personal sharing as well. So before I jump into that, let me introduce, let me introduce myself to you in case you haven't seen me before and also why I do these talks and what these talks are usually about. Yes. <laughs> So first of all, thank you for joining me. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. This is my Facebook Live I do every day, by the way. It does go onto YouTube later on, so in case you're watching it there, it's started on Facebook first. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which inspires my work and also inspired these talks I started doing over two years ago. Called, actually, well, over two years ago, now yeah. Called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today's topic, is another suggestion and, and inspirational message from that same content. I talk about love and relationships every day. And so today we're at episode 727, so a bunch of these have been done. And again, the topic is, does your, does your need for a relationship outweigh, say outweigh or stronger than? Is your, need for relationships, is your need for relationships stronger than your desire for one? I think that's what I said, something like that. Let me try breaking this down another way. So first of all, um, if you're not in a relationship, this will probably be more relevant to you. Actually, no, you know what? If you're in a relationship or you're not in a relationship, this could be relevant to you if you're looking for a relationship. Let me try them again, let's do that backwards. If you're in a relationship, this will be, can be relevant to you. And if you're looking for a relationship, this can be relevant to you. If you're not looking, something to reflect on. Because <laughs> that's something I'm talking about. So. The reason I'm putting the question about need versus desire is because a lot of people have a relationship as a must have in their lives. Like they won't be complete until they have that relationship. And they have also probably had several false starts of having relationships that didn't match up to what they wanted. I can speak that myself, <laughs> just to be transparent. And so the idea of relationship for a lot of people is a must have. It's a, it's a driven, um, almost like a goal, in fact, to have a relationship. You know, going to have the career, going to have the house, going to have the car, going to have the relationship. It's all requirements. Maybe it's part of the American dream. I'm not sure because I don't know if it's true of all countries like that. But certainly it's something I'm aware of that a lot of people have that thing in their head. And particularly, particularly those that are in relationship, I have noticed, can have judgments against those who are not in relationship. Maybe just my own personal experience. Um, I know that being a relationship coach and being single, I've had some interesting feedback from people who think, well, they need to be working with somebody who's been in a relationship for 20 years before they work with them, which I have a certain um, understanding of, but also a disagreement with, I would say. Because there are people in there who have been in for 25, 30, 35, 45, 50 year relationships. They're very dysfunctional. So I'm not sure if you want to learn from them. Yes, there are things they've learnt through the pressure of that many years. I know my parents went through that for 60 years before my mother passed away. However, what I've, been, what I've learnt and studied and taught for the last decade or two is definitely something that would add to your relationship experience. So I'd like to think my skills are additive. So in this context, talking about the need versus desire, it's kind of a trick question, to be honest. <laughs> Damn, I tricked him. Is when you have a need for a relationship, it's actually a need for anything. This, is, this actually is, um, I'm not sure if there's a law of attraction teaching or it's another teaching. There's other teachings about need versus desire, or need and want versus acceptance or affirming. There's a whole bunch of, um, terms on the spectrum from detachment to attachment basically if you have an attachment and need for a relationship then it's a rather um, codependent energetic because for most people when they're driven by need it's coming from a place inside of lack coming from a place inside of, of being incomplete or being a percent a, a less than 100% fully who you are that makes sense and so having this drive to have the relationship to fill yourself up somehow is a never-ending saga that never works because that yearning to fill yourself up because with somebody else's presence it doesn't work it's like putting a square peg in a round hole it won't fit so your energetics won't will never be satisfied by whoever you bring into your life so that need for a relationship really is um incomplete now on another level for some people that need a relationship is one just to have somebody else around they want to have the company of somebody else in their lives that's fine. And to know that there is 
more to life than just another relationship. So know that it's okay to be alone because for a lot of people that need for relationship because they feel more secure, more comfortable, more safe having somebody else around. They're not comfortable with themselves. Again, back to this feeling of incompleteness. One of the biggest challenges I think for people in relationship is, especially if they've done it since we were very young, is they may not really own and honor and know who they really are as a whole being. In fact, they may be in a place where every relationship or the relationship they're in is absolutely um, the be or end all of their existence. It's the reason why they're around. Like the, the, the relationship is the reason for their being this, in fact, nothing else counts. So that's another way of looking at it, which is that relationships are in fact, because in a lot of times relationships at using that framework, in that framing, are a trap. Because there are ways to limit your possibility of who you really are. So speaking to the elephant in the room, <laughs> so to speak, for many people, the opportunity to grow exists for them when they're not in a relationship. I'll say that again more clearly. <laughs> so sometimes it's better to be away from relationship to really get to know who you really are than when you're in a relationship. Now, this is a double-edged sword too because when you're in a relationship, your stuff's going to show up so you get to know who you really are as well. But when you're alone, you can do more growth, more change, more transformation. When you, more growth, more change, more transformation. I'm trying to say that English. When you're alone, because there's more flexibility in your life. When you, have a, when you have a relationship, sometimes your freedom to change, move, and evolve is limited because of the, the containment of that relationship. Again, these are all possibles. These are not rules. So just be clear about that. So a couple of things I wanted to say to that is being single isn't a bad thing, first of all. Being a person who's single, I like to claim that and say that for the truth. Because there are many people I know of who are single and happy with it. Hang on, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> Some slight allergies going on. I've been sneezing a few times lately during my broadcast, which is not very good, but I'm hopefully covering the mic so you're not getting blown out. Okay. Now shake my head up and I get back to being present. So being single is an okay thing. Being in a relationship is an okay thing. But being in a relationship from a place of desire, of intention, of affirmation, is a healthy way to be in a relationship because you're looking to create one with the person where it's adding to who you really are. So adding to adding to who you, who you already are, but we're saying it. Part of the challenge for a lot of people when they're looking for love is they're looking for it to fill a gap they think they have. Maybe it's because when they moved out from their parents, they never felt resolved or complete or fulfilled, so they felt like they're always missing something. So the desire for a relationship is a hunger to fill a gap they don't have. So it's not going to work. So my, my message here really is simply to say, in one part, is that to shift your, um, your need for relationship from the attachment level to a detached and more available level or, or play, because that's the, really the best way of being. In relationship is one that is more detached. I dropped the, the word codependent earlier, and I'll speak to that a bit more in this moment. When we believe we're not whole and complete, when we think that we're not the best of who we can be, then we will tend to seek out something else to fill that gap. Whether it's another person in a relationship, whether it's some substance, say alcohol, whether it's sports or activities, maybe it's work you'll drive yourself into. There are people who get into the um, isms, you know, alcoholism, work workaholism, all these different things. Workaholism? No. Yeah. Yes. Sort of workaholic. Yes. To make sure I said that right. And they do that to fill up a gap they think they have. Again, same thing with relationship. So it's the same thing that's not healthy. A healthy relationship is based on two individuals who are whole and complete as they are, coming together and adding to what they have. That's, a, that's for me, I would define as a healthy relationship. And I've been clear in past relationships where I wasn't doing that as a participant, nor was my partner. So I've been through the journey of having relationships that were so invested and enmeshed and in some ways toxic and I saw how it didn't work, which is why I'm so passionate about educating people who are single. Don't fall in that trap I did. One more piece I want to add to this is part of the detachment process, so to speak, or the detachment perspective of not being in a place where you have to have a relationship, but where you look forward to one, is where you're also unattached enough that if you never have one, you're okay. And that's a big ask for a lot of people. For me, it's something I've become very clear in the last few years that I had to really get clear that if I spend the rest of my life doing my work, which I'm passionate about, and being single, that would be okay. It's not my preference, but it's also not the death of me, so to speak. 
So relationships are something that I believe are, especially maybe it's, maybe it's the modern time we live in, are not as required anymore because you know back in the day, relationships were a lot of times were simply to create um, descendants, to create the family lineage, to keep people to keep growing the population. We're not in that place anymore. So maybe this is a shift that we're going through culturally as well. I'm not sure if it's true, but I have a sense that that need for a relationship is not as critical as it used to be. Because raising the family, even though some states are making raising a family required now, um, I'm, that's something else in the media we're going to talk, to talk about, but it makes it seem like we're living in an old paradigm. When we really live clearly in our truth, that relationship is something we add to our lives when we want to. It makes a much healthier choice and a much cleaner way of being. I just realized I dropped a bomb in the middle of that one. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> okay. I'm going to make this very brief because I don't want to, I don't want to get the whole explainer, but there's something I've become very aware of looking at the history of this country and, and around the world too. There are certain laws and beliefs instilled in our system that propagate more um, births and families being created to support the society we live in. It's unnecessary, but it's something still being created. I have a whole bunch of beliefs I'm not going to talk about here about who's in charge and why it's happening and the other stuff. But that mindset, that belief system that's still running is still driving as a subconscious level that being in a family is better than being single. That being in a relationship is better than being single. And I'm here, to, I'm here as a counterpoint to that to say that I believe that being single is totally fine. That being in a relationship is not, a, is not the be-all and end-all of, of life or of success or of fulfillment. But I ask you for your input. I'm going to leave this out there as a question to see what is your viewpoint on this. I'll give you some thoughts about why a relationship should be, is better off being a want versus a need, but also whether a relationship is necessary or not. So my, my invitation to you is to put your thoughts, your questions, your perceptions below about your thoughts about relationship necessary or unnecessary being single is okay or not okay what do you think that's a different one i'm leaving you to, i'm leaving that for you to give me some to ask, ask some questions so your choice you let me know what you think of this because this is something that i'm not going to provide the answers to because i don't have the answers but i have a feeling about it and i'd like to hear your um your perception so feel free to write below what you think about this topic and if you want to add something to it um i'll, I'll definitely answer when i sign off and uh I'm curious to know. Okay. <laughs> that was an interesting direction. I didn't plan on going there, but that's the way it ended up. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every these talks that are very varietal, very, very diverse around the area of love and relationship. A lot of self-love stuff lately. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays are on my business page, which is barryselby.author. And also my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. There's a playlist, playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, so those three places. The topics usually are a teaching or an inspi insight inspiration. This one's more provocative because I don't have the answers. I'm curious to know what you think. So with that, I thank you for um, watching, and I definitely invite you to add your um, thoughts and feedback on this to see what you think. I'm just curious to know what you're thinking about this too. So if you want to talk to me, by the way, I'll leave a link in the comments for a contact form so you reach out if you want to talk about love and relationships. If you want some help, definitely reach out. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you in other ways and down the road. Uh, back in tomorrow with another topic, I think, unless this opens up a whole other conversation. So I invite you to join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow for more fun and games. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about something separate. So join me then and look forward to seeing you soon. All right? So I'm sorry, just checking something here. Uh, uh, all right, take care of yourselves. I look forward to speaking to you soon. And again, I invite your feedback and thoughts about this. I'll see you soon. Bye.